Woo! Yeah. Uh huh. Get him. Ah! I'd like to welcome you to Deep Rock Galactic. This indie game is like a cross between Minecraft and Starship Troopers. Supporting co-op up to four players, you descend into alien infested undergrounds to collect valuable minerals. The core gameplay loop is that of a first person shooter, but you have abilities and gadgets that help break up the shooting. You can choose from four classes that are each unique and bring their own utility to the fight. And actually Deep Rock Galactic is one of the few games that I found makes it difficult to live with any of the classes because each of their roles are so valuable. Now let's go over each of them to see which one you'd like to start with. The engineer deploys a turret that will fire on enemies. It uses ammo and must be replenished, but packs a punch and helps you cover flanks. You can relocate the turret at any time, but when it lands to a new location, you do have to rebuild it. The platform gun that the engineer has allows him to create walkable terrain literally anywhere. At the making of this video, the platforms also have no fall damage, so you can use them as a little landing pad when you're jumping off high ledges. The platforms work great with the scout who can grapple up to high places, so you give them a little place to land on. The engineer has proxy mines that help guard flanks as well as the turret, and a lure trap that taunts enemies towards it. This is useful for turning large aliens away from you so you can attack their weak point. The engineer rocks a shotgun or a submachine gun as the primary and a secondary that's a grenade launcher or a breach cutter, which shoots horizontal lines that deal massive AOE damage. This is generally the one you'll see people using. The scout is the most mobile of all four classes. It has a grappling hook that allows him to get around pretty easily. And as we mentioned before, it works great with an engineer placing platforms on high ledges. While all dwarves have throwable flares to light up the dark caves, the scout is the only one that can hook massive flares into any surface to fill a room with light. These flares can make fights much easier as enemies will come from anywhere, including the ceiling, so being able to see them helps a lot. The scout is more classic FPS, sporting an assault rifle, long rifle, and a shotgun or SMG. The slow grenade and freeze grenade are two of the best utility grenades that the scout brings. One will do a slowing area that slows mobs and groups together, and a freeze grenade just freezes enemies in place, and you can actually shatter key enemies by hitting them after you freeze them. The driller is one of my favorite classes, as he can create tunnels anywhere he pleases and has one of the most creative movements in the game. And for primary weapons, the driller has a flamethrower or a cryo gun that does AoE freezing. Specialty grenades are best used for clearing terrain along with the satchel charge, but the throwing axe can deal a lot of nasty damage to weak spots of big bugs, including the dreadnoughts when you're doing extermination. The power drills give flexible movement. You can drill into any surface and create a tunnel by holding down the left click. It will overheat, so watch that, but allows you to drill through anything. You can drill straight up to an objective using your map, and if you're on your way out, you can actually drill a line straight to the exit pod instead of having to walk through the tunnels that exist. And you can even drill out bunkers to help your team fight in a more condensed area when you're doing the King of the Hill or Stand and Fight type modes. Lastly, we have the Gunner. He's the big boy of the group. He carries heavy weapons like the minigun or auto cannon, and generally doesn't have to reload. He just sprays down large groups of enemies. The shield generator is clutch. You can throw it down to limit the attack of a big wave, or you can res a teammate inside of your shield generator. The gunner's utility comes in the form of zip lines that he can deploy across caverns that any dwarf in the mission can take advantage of. You can traverse up or down the zip lines and can even hover midway to avoid attacks by constantly switching directions. There are a variety of biomes and objectives to be challenged with in Deep Rock Galactic. These fall into categories of mining, where you ask to collect a specific mineral, egg hunt, where you hunt down and harvest alien eggs, salvage operation, you must recover lost equipment from a previous team. This usually has a stand in fight kind of mode. Point extraction, a king of the hill style extraction where you have a single mine head that you bring extracted crystals to. So you don't have to travel through a large cave. You're just going and grabbing crystals and bringing them back to the mine head. 
Elimination, you're tasked with taking out dangerous aliens right now. That's just the Dreadnoughts who have a large HP pool and lots of AoE and mean, mean movement. When you're playing, the Terrain Scanner will be your best friend and can help guide you to objectives throughout a mission. So hold tab on PC to bring it up and see the map and you can move this around to see the surrounding area. Holding control will bring up a spotter tool that can be used to both ping specific minerals for your team or just hold down the button to point at something and your teammates will see this beam. I find this useful to show teammates a path or help guide them to a specific spot without having to talk to each other. There are many creatures you'll encounter on your missions and most of them are self-explanatory. Now that said, let's quickly cover some of the nastier creatures to be wary of. Glyphid Praetorians and Glyphid Oppressors are heavily armored and have high HP. Both of them can be destroyed quickly with the weak spot on their hiney. Glyphid Wardens raise the defense of any creatures in their vicinity. And you'll see this giant beam collection of pink beams coming out of them. So they're a priority target to take out because otherwise the, the creatures around them will take less damage. Glyphid Menaces usually crawl out of the ceiling and they have that blue glow on all sides and they'll rapid fire blue spit at you from afar. If you fire back at them, they can return into the wall, but if you didn't kill it, be mindful that it will resurface again elsewhere and start shooting you over again. Mactera Grabbers will fly in and grab one player and attempt to fly away with them in their grasp. They will eventually drop them, but it may be from a high altitude, resulting in a falling death. Likewise, cave leeches reside on the ceiling and have the longest arm in history. They will reach a long, creepy arm to grab teammates, pull them up to the ceiling, and kill them there. And in this case, they won't let you go. A teammate will need to break you out of it. Spitball infectors will wake up and start shooting explosive spitballs at you, and trust me, they hurt. Luckily, you can shoot the spitballs out of the air with your weapon. Glyphid Brood Nexus spawn little swarmers indefinitely until destroyed, so if you see swarmers spawning regularly and attacking you, go look for a Brood Nexus that might be nearby. Natasite breeders fly around dropping eggs that spawn Natasite shockers, little zappy jellyfish, so these need to be taken out fast as well. Glyphid Exploders, the banelings of Deep Rock Galactic, and, well, they explode when they die or get near you. Hot tip, if you shoot them in the head, they won't explode when they die. You can also freeze them and shatter them to prevent them from exploding. And lastly, the big daddy, the Fearbringer. This creature should make all players in the mission perk up and focus on it immediately. The Detonator. It's essentially a giant walking warhead and will do area of effect massive melee slams if you get close to it. Once killed, the Detonator has a massive explosion area, so run far away when they die. These are easily the most threatening creature you will run into in your mining expeditions. And if all that felt like a lot, don't worry, you'll learn the creatures as you face them through spending time in the game. The resources you need to be most aware of in a mission are Nitra and Red Sugar. The rest of them are used for crafting or will be an objective when you're on a mission, but Nitra specifically allows you to call in ammo resupplies and you want to get these quickly, and Red Sugar heals you if you end up taking some damage on your health. Personally, for me, I like going straight for Nitra to get it to 80 at the start of a mission in case we get swarmed and I want to be able to replenish our ammo early. Now, if you're wondering what class to pick or how to level up, here's my recommendation. Pick one class and then level it all the way to level 25 without playing any other classes unless you just want to test them out. This is because at level 25, you can promote that class to a higher level of mining, which grants you access to both deep dives, which is a different mode with better rewards, and machine events. Both of these unlocks give you access to overclocks for your weapons and better loot, so don't miss out. Deep dives are super fun. They're actually three consecutive missions in a row without returning back to the rig. So whatever resources you have, you keep them throughout the whole mission. You have to do all three missions in a row and you'll see you diving deeper and deeper into the area you're in and you have to survive the whole time. But when you finish, you get a lot more loot from it and they're super fun. There are five difficulties in total you can set for your missions with the first four being available at the start. The fifth difficulty or lethal brings intense and almost non-stop waves of aliens but must be unlocked through the assignment system. Like most grinding games, there are assignments you can grab from the assignment board in the space rig. 
This is where you'll get your quest for promotion, skins, matrix cores, and all kinds of goodies. So you want to make sure you always have one assignment active if there's one available. Once selected, a white flashing icon will tell you what missions on the mission board will fulfill your current assignment. So you only just have to select the assignment, look at the mission board, and you don't have to think too hard on it. A special note for ales, as these can provide buffs to you or your team, but they're not explained that well. Today's special ale, which is the top offering in the, in the bar, will give you the buff and will be purchased using barley bulbs. However, every other ale you purchase that's not today's special is for cosmetic only and doesn't give you any buffs for the mission. So keep that in mind. And because of this, keep an eye out for barley bulbs as you're going around in your mission because this is the currency you'll use to buy your buffs. And as a bonus, you'll find secrets occasionally inside missions and they aren't well explained either. Terrain scanners look like a tiny helmet and will beep when you get near them. Once collected, it will seem like nothing has happened, but if you look on your map for a small pink dot, Dot, it'll indicate a loot chest. So dig your way to that pink dot and you'll unlock various items, including cosmetics. Typically, that area where the loot chest is is not in a passable area. You, the only way to find it is if you had picked up the terrain scanner. Cargo crates look like this and will be inactive when you find them. Somewhere near the cargo crate, you'll seek out two cylinders that will beep as well to help you find them. You'll want to bring them back to the cargo crate, place them inside, and repair it. Once you've repaired the cargo crate, it'll drop a bunch of resources, and then it'll give you a cosmetic item for each player in the mission. And that gives you a basic rundown of Deep Rock Galactic with some basics that can help you get into the game. There's a lot more to cover, but I think this gives you the basics and you're ready to go. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one.